Do do do. Should have opened this first. Ah, discovered with these uh, little wax sample bottles. Brute force is the best way to get into them. Now then, what have I done with my? It went up. We're resuming our month-long escapade into lowland whiskies, and today I have a distillery that I'm a big fan of, that I was really, 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 really looking forward to. Uh, and there was a bottle that was released uh, that I saw, and then my heart sank because it was a little, quite expensive. And I was like, oh, if only there was some way to try a sample. And lo and behold, uh, <laughs> the sample guys really, really helped out on that one. Um, it's almost as if they just telepathically kind of like know what I would like to try, and they go, yeah, we'll sample that. Because, you know, the universe revolves around me. Uh, so we'll be looking at that today, and it's a corker of a... Well, certainly a, a corker of a whiskey in terms of uh, its appearance, but that's something we'll be touching on. But first, uh, if you want to get weekly whiskey videos or other booze spirit reviews by this... I can't help but emphasise this. This is what you're getting. Uh, then do subscribe to the channel and hit the bell notification icon because that tells you when I've been let out again. Uh, but for now, we're talking about Lindor's Abbey. Uh, and this is a single cask release. I've actually noted down some details about this whiskey on the back of a Sainsbury's receipt. So it was 43 pounds and 683 nectar points. It's 79 pounds and it's the Whiskey Barrel 15th birthday edition. Uh, it's from an Oloroso cask, uh, specifically cask 585, three years old, and we know that because it was cast on the 2nd of the 8th, 2018, and it was bottled on the 14th of the 2nd, 2022, so a little over three years. Uh, now then, moving on from that, how do you get that colour in three years? That's really quite special, isn't it? It's a deep mahogany colour. It's a beautiful... Uh, amazing, amazing colour, it really is. Um, that's all natural as well. You can absolutely get that colour in three and a half years if you cheat, just ask Dalmore. Um, uh, one would suspect, one must suspect, that the... I mean, obviously the cask on this has to be incredibly active. Um, so, it would be fair to say, I think, to expect a lot of Oloroso from this. I think we can just discern that from the fact that it is that colour after three and a half years, because it is stunning. Um, I do believe it's spent its entire... Do you know, it doesn't mention it, but the fact that it only mentions one cask would seem to imply that it was... It's from birth to death, it's all been in that cask. It's not a, It's not been transferred. I don't really know why you would do that after three and a half years, to be fair, so that... Yeah. Having said that, it doesn't make that much sense, so, yeah. Anyway, ignore that point. Um, so I'm keen to, to get into it. Now, the last time I came across a whiskey that was that colour, uh, it was the Cask 79 Edge Dower, uh, the Signatory Edition. Um, and it is, to date, the only whiskey that I've given top marks to. And I've gotten a bit of a bit of a slate in for that from, you know, other people that do score whiskies. You know, it's like, oh, there's no such thing as top marks. I take issue with that. Um, as someone that got 119 out of 120 on a geography exam once, I'm like, what was the thing I missed, realistically? What, what was it? Uh, now, I'm not saying there wasn't something I did I missed, but it's always held fast for me that there is this notion that top marks don't exist. There is no such thing as a perfect score. And when you do that, you basically, you do actually change the grade boundary, if you think about it that way. Um, because it means that, you know, on a test that's 120 out of 120, the actual mark is 119, if that's the top that they will allow you to have to save face. I don't think it makes you look more discerning or more professional by withholding scores because you want to look better. I, d I, don't, I just don't understand that. Um, I stand by the scores that I gave it. Is it a perfect whiskey? No. There is no such thing as perfect. Did it master everything that I was asking it off of my scoring system? And was I happy that it was the best that it could be based on what it's presented? Yes, that is why it got top marks. So, <clears throat> I'm excited to, to give this a go. Oh, she nutty. <laughs> oh, she nutty. She nutty. She nutty. Oh, P 
pecans, roasted peanuts. It's a little caramelly as well. It's oh, just being beaten to death with raisins. Beaten to death with raisins. It's it's a honey nut chocolate bar. That's what it is. It's a honey nut chocolate bar. A very underrated chocolate, that one. Oh, it's tickle biscuity as well. We've got the purple Yorkie coming into play now. Oh. I mean, you can tell it's strength because it do, it does uh, stings the nostrils. This one. <sighs> Good evening. It's <sighs> there's a little bit of a black pepper note to it, but it's gloriously fruity, tannic, sweet, nutty. You do have to be careful breathing because do you know what? I mean, I've I've noticed plenty of cast strength booze in the past, so, you know, don't judge too much, but it, it really does. It really like gets in there and it's like, I'm gonna like rip your nose hairs out. But it's beautifully rich. Um I suspect I'm going to enjoy this one. Um Will it be the new top market? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. But um I don't know, I mean, you know, if I was celebrating the 15th birthday of a website, you could do a lot worse than this. Ooh. Oh, it's it's beautiful. Um, dark chocolate, raisins, nuts. Oh, the, what is that? It's a, it's a little acidic, almost like a like an apple cider vinegar. Um, now, normally when you talk about acidity and like a vinegariness that would seem to indicate an off note. It's the aroma of an apple cider vinegar, not the sort of acidic tang, but I'm kind of conflating the two in my head because I'm kind of stumbling towards what that is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm, I'm going to taste this because I want to. Cara mia. Wow. <laughs> Plums, apricots, 80% cocoa chocolate. It's bitter, it's rich. It's tannic, it has a, like a Bordeaux wine quality to it. It's, the nuts aren't there, interestingly enough. That's an interesting kind of um, omission from the nose. What you are getting is autumn stone fruits. A little bit of a, like a sake note to it almost. It's that kind of like dry rice wine kind of a kind of an element to it. It it really does. <laughs> it's it's showing off what a sherry whiskey can be without being monotone. It's it's giving you something else. Figs, rich oak. I know oak is kind of like a phoned in tasting note. Um, but again, it's taken a lot out of that cask. The cask has had a lot to give. It's spicy, it's rich, it's got a spectacular borderline umami quality to it. Um, there is pepper, there is clove. It's, it's a stunning autumn whiskey for want of a better way of putting it. I know, again, that's not a tasting note, it's more of a, a sensation. Um, but it is, it's it's the kind of whiskey that, like, you know, you would happily just sit on the doorsteps, there's a pumpkin there, there's a fox doing fox stuff, there's leaves falling, it's a little bit chilly, but it's still mild enough for you to sit outside in a good coat. And you're drinking this and you're going, everything is right in the world, and you're lying to yourself because the world's fucking falling to bits. But in that moment, you are content. Oh, that was beautiful. Where did that come from? <laughs> oh. Not something that happens to me, but I swallowed a little too early and I wasn't expecting it. Oh. It is potent. 
<clears throat> so I'm gonna pop a little bit of whiskey in. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm not gonna pop a bit of whiskey in it. I'm gonna. Am I drunk? I'm gonna put some water in it. Is what I'm gonna do, and possibly for the best. If this is how much I'm slurring already. <clears throat> boop, boop, boop. Uh, again, as noted before, it's it's strong. It's did I say 58 percent? Is it 58 percent? It is 58.8 percent. I was getting confused because it's from cask 585. And it's also 50, so I was like, am I misremembering that? I'm not, turns out. Swooshy, swooshy, swooshy. There's a little bit of like a peat smoke element to it, which is bizarre because I do not believe there's any peat in this. So that's an odd note to be getting. I stand by it, but there's an element of a, a slight sourness to it now. Like a, like a like a cooking apple or something like that. There's ginger, little molasses. The nuts are away. The nuts are, are not coming to the party anymore. It's it's the embers of a bonfire. It's not a million miles away actually from the aroma that I was getting from the PX rum uh the wester from a little while ago uh the nose on that was infinitely spilled like i i still occasionally just open it just to smell it <laughs> it's so fucking good uh if you haven't seen that video there'll be a card somewhere probably um but that it hasn't a reminiscence of that but without the full impact it's tannic it's dry it's dark chocolate it's figs and honey Salt caramel a little bit. And wood smoke. It's spicy. Cinnamon, clove, nutmeg. It's a little dry. There's a hint of peach in there, a little apricot. Plenty of plums and figs again. A little bit of vanilla in there as well. There's a huge amount going on, and I'm here for it. A little cashier as well, uh, cashier bark. Oh. Is that a £79 whiskey? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's worth what they're asking. Um... Natural colour, non-chill filtered, cask strength, an extremely active cask, so you're getting your money's worth in that respect. Yes, it's young, but a lot of these younger distilleries right now have some experience in getting the absolute best out of their whiskey. It's not like 20 years ago when you had new releases and they were like, yeah, it's going to be a bit crap, but you're going to buy it, and then we'll release the good stuff later. Aaron being a good example of that one, actually, the uh, three-year-old. Nothing happening to that one. And look at them now. They are just knocking out the fucking part. People cannot get enough of it. Literally. A little bit worried they might be the next spring bank, to be honest. I hope not. Because I think we've had enough of those bloody shenanigans for now. Do you enjoy Lindor's Abbey? Do you enjoy Sherry? Um, what do you think about Mark's... Not the, not the writer. Like the... Um, what we were talking about earlier, about, you know, oh, you can't have top marks, you, you have to have lower, because that makes us look legitimate. You know, that's bollocks. I feel like there's a degree of bollocks to that. Um, do you like sherry casks? Um, say all these things and more down below. Um, thumb this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to the channel if you aren't already, because I do this on a weekly basis. Uh, and if you want to contribute to the channel, you can sign up over on Patreon or become a channel member, where you'll be able to watch the rest of this week of uh, Lowland w w whiskey videos. Oh god. <clears throat> um right now so that's an incentive for you to sign up and for me to actually get these fucking done so that's fun for both of us uh for now though thank you very much for watching and do join me next time where i'll be drinking something else